If you think you may be accused, how do you go about protecting yourself? The most important thing is to get good quality information now. Read the material specifically written for you on our website. That would be a good place to start. Next, retain an attorney who is a specialist in the field and do it now, not later. Local lawyers and folks who've handled one or two of these cases are not experts. Most attorneys handle these cases like any other criminal case. That's simply a mistake and sometimes it's malpractice. Because these cases are so dangerous to your liberty and to your family, you owe it to yourself and your loved ones to get an expert litigator in this difficult area. area. Frankly, it's time to hawk the farm. If you expect to get by with a reasonable local lawyer, if you believe that the legal system operates on fairness and truth, and if you believe you need to hold some funds back for a rainy day, think again. The law and order and the get tough on crime folks in your community have been sending to the state legislature and putting on the bench people who will be harsh in this area. They have worked overtime to erode your constitutional rights. New court rulings hold that it's okay for the police to lie and trick you, and they will, and for the courts to withhold vital evidence from the juries, and they do. So you better get real. Get real help. Get it now. Next, write a detailed chronology, but the first thing you write on the document is quotes. Notes for my attorney, attorney-client privilege. You want to do that so that if they get intercepted, you can raise the issue of attorney-client privilege that your notes have been improperly reviewed. The format's simple. It consists of a three-part chronology that'll aid the attorney in preparing your case. Here's how you do it. In the left-hand margin, type in the date of the event that you're going to describe. Keep all the events in chronological order tab over to the middle of the document and type in the who, the what, the where, the why, the how. Why is this event significant? Then tab over to the right side of the document and put in information about where this information comes from. How can it be proved? Is it a photo? Is it a video? Is it a witness statement? What kind of a document can be used or what kind of thing can be used to prove what's been alleged in this middle paragraph? Writing this chronology with a word processor will make it easier for the attorney to use at a later time. The attorney will take this chronology and it'll help him or her direct their questions for you and will help to fashion your defense. It will also greatly decrease the amount of time that it takes for the attorney to get up to speed with your case. It's important that you include everything. You know your case, but your attorney doesn't. If you aren't certain whether it should be included or not, include it. Let the attorneys separate out the wheat from the chaff. It's your job to get it all down, to get your attorney up to speed, so don't leave anything out. Describe your history, your family's history, and everything that you can think of that might be relevant and led up to these allegations. A competent attorney will use this chronology and search for elements needed to save you and your family. Since it's on a disk, and written specifically for the attorney, remember to put attorney-client privilege at the top of it. If it's on a disc, put a label on the disc that says that. It's also very helpful, especially at the beginning of a case, if you create a witness list. List everyone, the good guys, the bad guys, include their names, addresses, and telephone numbers, date of birth if you know them. Get their employment addresses if you know them. This will save enormous amounts of time later and will be necessary for your investigators. Be sure that you describe your relationship with each of these folks. It can be very short, best friend, ex-wife, things of that nature. Try to describe each of these folks and what they might say if they ever take the witness stand, or if they talk to the police, or to the social services. Don't leave anyone out. Make sure to describe this as an attorney-client privilege document as well. The next thing you should do is to get copies of everything. Now, in some states, you're allowed to get more than in others. Some states only allow the attorney to get some of these documents. 
But if you happen to have any social services reports, any school reports, get copies of them and bring them to the attorney. Any medical records, any police reports or old police reports having to do with the issue, get copies, bring them to the attorney. Any psychologist, psychiatrist or social worker reports, either on yourself or the person making the accusation. If you have copies at home, make copies and bring them to the attorney. School records, either make copies or get copies and bring them to the attorney. Has someone interviewed your child before? Well, if you have access to the notes or audio or videotapes or any reports from prior interviews, bring them to the attorney. Any test results, any photographs, any newspaper articles, get copies, get copies, get copies. If it isn't relevant, don't worry, the attorney can sort it out. Make sure your attorney is on the case. Information is power. Remember CBS, 48 Hours, NBC Dateline, ABC 2020, Frontline, have all indicated that social services folks and the police will put every negative spin possible on everything that they find out about you. They can take your children and put you in prison. If you want to wait around a few years until the DNA evidence proves you innocent, I wouldn't recommend it. Because on that day, the prosecutor will fight tooth and nail to exclude the DNA evidence. So get serious. Get the information gathered and bring it to your attorney. Now there are a number of motions that can be filed. Those are normally filed by an attorney and that will allow you to get the records that you cannot personally get. The attorney should be busy gathering data because data is power. Make sure that your rights are being vis vigorously protected by gathering all of this data as quickly as possible. You can also get affirmative in the courts. You don't have to wait until the police do something to you. You can go in and file motions to protect your rights and to obtain discovery. The motion work really needs to be done strictly by the attorney that's working on your case and to be done immediately. Not waiting until you're down the road in a week from trial. Your attorney can make motions for both inculpatory and exculpatory evidence. You want it all. You want rap sheets that you can normally can't get yourself. The attorney can get those. School records you cannot normally get yourself. The attorney can get those. The other thing that your attorney can be preparing for is what's called a taint hearing. It comes out of the important case of New Jersey versus Margaret Kelly Michaels. In that case, they found that the videotapes that the child protectors, the We Care Daycare Center uh, investigators, had manipulated the children and manipulated the children's recollections. The only way you can prove that is by gathering the data and having a taint hearing if it applies in your case. In some states, you can get an independent evaluation of the person accusing you. You cannot do that in the state of California anymore, but you can in some states. So in summary, what I would say is get every piece of paper you can. Every piece of paper that you can think of that has anything to do with your case, bring it to your attorney. He'll sort it out and he'll toss back what is not needed.